Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we hope you have an amazing day and you get to learn a lot of stuff like we did in these two weeks with Nodon Altus. Um, we're the memory group. We work in a project about memory. So I'm Monica. I'm Monica. And and after a week of neuroscience classes and tinkering sessions, I guess we were all very keen to learn more and more about uh, our brain and the nervous system. And our group is actually really interested in memory because, I mean, we all have it, but what is it and how does it work? And we started asking a lot and a lot of questions and we got answers to, to them, thankfully, because we have like amazing uh, people <laughs> teaching us. Um, and we decided to do a project uh, on what actually influences our memory. Because I'm going to say a situation that I think we can all relate to. We've all been like in a classroom with a teacher uh, like trying to tell us a subject that we don't really like care about. Sorry, not this, not this. Uh, and that information just doesn't really stick to your brain. And we wanted to know what actually like affects it. So we landed on this one question, which was, the scholar influence our capability of memorizing. Um, so yeah, then we started to like develop an experiment around this central question. But before we get to that, we need to define what actually is memory. So a very broad definition of memory is that it is a, a psychological process of acquiring, storing, retaining, and recalling information. And without it, it would be virtually impossible to develop language relationship, relationships or personal identity. Mm -hmm. uh, memory can be divided in many types, and one of them is short-term memory. Uh, this memory is the a memory that allows to short, uh, store information for uh, small information for a short amount of time. Uh, it's located in the pre prefrontal cortex, and studies don't st studies show that it can hold around. Um, seven or eight items of information at a time. So this color influences our ability to memorize. Uh, color has been found to affect memory performance um, by increasing our awareness levels. It is believed to be the most important uh, visual experience to human beings. And there's strong evidence that um, comes uh, from several studies that have been conducted to explore the relationship between color and memory performance. Before we did our study, uh, our experiment, we decided to do some research on uh, previous done uh, similar uh, scientific studies. Then uh, we stumbled with this one specifically because it was very uh, similar and is by Felix, Carl, and Lindsay who showed us exactly that. In the experiment, uh, consisting of two phases, subjects were shown 48 pictures um, presented at different durations. Half of them were black and white, and the other half was colored. Um, in the query phase, so the question, people made questions. Uh, those 48 pictures were mixed with other 48 new pictures that they haven't, haven't seen before, and were asked to indicate whether he or she had already seen that picture before. So at the end, the authors used the recognition method uh, to assess the influence of color uh, in, on the visual memory. And in conclusion, subjects performed 5 to 10% better for color rather than for black and white pictures independently of the exposure duration, as we can see in the graph. So for, for our final project, uh, what we were trying to see is how uh, color would affect our capability of memorizing some objects and their exact position. So our objective was to try to see if there was a pattern in how color uh, would affect it or not. Uh, and to minimize uh, some strategies, we would have done this experiment 
when sometimes we start with the black and white test and then we start with the color test. So at the start, when we were just mind, like uh, when we were just uh, thinking about everything and what were we going to do, we developed some prototypes. And uh, first we thought about a memory test that was involved numbers. And what it would do is that uh, you had to memorize as much numbers as possible. But then we thought it was too simple and it will, doesn't evolve color. So then we changed to an, an, another uh, type of experience that was uh, with those image. And the objective was to try to memorize as much objects as possible. And it will, uh, the person will do it with a, the images with color and with black and white and see if there was any difference. Uh, we run that test. Uh, sometimes and we uh, saw that it was a, a very biased so we changed it again so to our final project and we finally uh, got to a decision where the, this was our first final prototype for our experience uh, that we later changed it a little bit because for, for example the objective for this test is for the person to memorize as much figures as possible. And then we would give it to a person and they would. And uh, the problem with this one first prototype is what it was that it was too simple and some figures look very alike with each other. Okay, so then we came up with this final prototype, uh, which is basically uh, two tables uh, one in color and another in black and white, and both of them containing some basic figures, um, basic figures, and that uh, we needed to remember where they were and uh, their position. So the figures, first of all, they needed to be very simple so that uh we couldn't understand them so now let's start with our experiment that had to follow this protocol so the subject had a limited amount of time to uh, look at uh, a table containing figures and had to memorize their spot and their shape each figure could only appear once in a table so there couldn't be any repetition of figures then, when the time was over, uh, the subject stopped having access to the table uh, and then was given an empty table so that the subject would need to fill the figures in their correct spot. Um, in the case that the subject uh, knew where the knew what the figure was, but it didn't know what where it was, they could write on the side of the table. Um, this test was run twice, uh, once in colors and another time in black and white. Uh, in the case of the color test, the subject didn't need to know the color uh, uh, by heart. Uh, they only need to need to know the shape and their position. Okay, so we finished our protocol and our next step was to start testing our experiment on as many people as possible in our limited amount of time. And we managed to uh, collect data from 32 people, uh, both uh, some of our fellow uh, Nurokadic and also some people we found outside uh, in Belay. Uh, we started to analyze the results in order to find a possible answer to our question. And this first graph that is shown here uh, it uh, provides an overview on the amount or uh, the number of subjects, which is displayed on the y-axis, uh, that got each amount of correct symbols from 0 to 12, which is uh, portrayed in the x-axis. The red columns represent the results that were drawn from the black and white test run, and the blue columns are the results from the color test run. If we take a look, for example, at um, the spot 8, uh, you can see that five people got um, eight symbols correctly in the colored version, and only one person got eight symbols correctly in the black and white version. 
So in general, there seem to be a lot more people remembering more than eight symbols in color rather than in black and white. This next slide contains two, two more graphs showing the success rates, which is the percentage of correct, correctly remembered symbols for each individual symbol um, in both the colored table and the black and white table. Uh, if we take a look at the table on the left, uh, the first um, shape was a music note and around 75% of people uh, were able to guess that, sh uh, that shape correctly. Similar to the results um, that we saw in the previous graph, um, the overall success rate of each individual symbol um, is noticeably higher for the symbols in the colored table rather than the black and white table. Uh, in this graph, we can see uh, the objects which people memorized more often in darker colors and less often in lighter colors. So we can see that people most often memorize the first objects in the first row what was the one that people got more right. Then uh, we also asked people their age so we could analyze what difference made this factor. Uh, we can see that people from 15 to 34 had a better performance in the black and white test, but in the colored one, uh, the score is uh, raised for almost every age group. The most noticeable rage was for all people with less than 15 years. So in black and white, people with less than 15 years scored in average uh, two. So people got right two objects. And then in the color, they, they write, it rose to uh, seven at average. So con what conclusions did we, did we end up coming to at the end of our experience? Well, we noticed that in the limited data that we collected, um, has some noticeable differences between both tests with each sub subject. Overall, the people seem to do way better on the color tests rather than the black and white tests. Um, although we did actually have some people tell us that um, the opposite happened to them. And when they finished the test, they told us straight up, oh, the colors didn't help me. The colors actually confused, confused me. So we ended up deciding that um, although we could see a change in this, these people that we did the, the project with, we're all different and um, we're all different and different factors affect us in different ways. And um, yeah, not every factor can have a different, um, a different af as <laughs> effect on us. And um, our, our tests could also have been affected by external factors like noise, for example, that could have an, um, an impact on our results. We also concluded that um, the people's performance was at their peak between the ages of 15 and 45, which if we think about it, actually it logically makes a bit sense for us. And this was our final conclusion of our test. To finish this off, uh, we would like to thank everyone that helped us with our study, but mainly we would like to thank Nunu for helping us <laughs> in our project. Without him, we wouldn't have uh, been able to finish this project in time. And Nunu. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? No? Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you.